Good morning. evening, everyone. It's the 26th of December, and it's about 6.15 here at Pineville Grace Fellowship. And I've entitled this video, Works Versus Grace. Now, I just sent out a link to everyone uh, on the historical um, narrative of the Mennonite churches. And a lot of, I think the title of it was uh, something I've been shunned. I had done a message uh, one time, have you ever been thrown under the bus? <laughs> well, these people that left the uh, Amish, I guess it was actually Amish, People that left the Amish, um, they were definitely ostracized by their families, and and their families didn't want to have anything to do with them, and so on. I've had, and Rosetta have had, very similar experiences with our relatives for a totally different reason, because we um, exalt the sovereign grace of God in election and predestination. And most of our relatives are Arminians, and they they believe it's uh, works and grace, kind of like the Mennonites and the Amish. Any organization that has at its roots as a mandate for salvation to keep you out of hell, traditions of men and works is not biblical salvation at all. Ephesians 2.8 says it's not a work lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God. You know? Are we going to count on our traditions? Whether we have, whether we're running with steel wheels or wooden wheels? How, how big our bonnets are on our heads we're wearing? What color of cloth we're wearing in our dress, you know, how we interact at the table, you know, all of these traditions of men, you know, whether we're running Clydesdale horses or something else, how good of farmers we are. How industrious we are. Is that going to bring us salvation? No, it's not. What youth group you're a member of, whether you're the most conservative, whether you're the most liberal. You know, there's a lot of people that are basing their salvation on, on works. And they have two sets of rules. They have a set of rules for themselves and a set of rules for everybody else. You know, doesn't the Bible say something about loving your enemy as yourself? Doesn't the Bible say something about that if you don't forgive your brother or sister that God won't forgive you? And so we see these hierarchies in religious circles. There's a lot of people playing popery because of their title, whether it's an elder or a deacon or a bishop or a senior pastor or a youth pastor or whatever it might be. Because they have a title, they think that puts them in a superior position. Just like they used to have the lady superiors in the Catholic Church. Nobody's superior. There's only one superior one, and that's Jesus Christ. He's the only one worthy. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? He is. All glory and honor and power belong to Jesus Christ, not to a senior pastor or a person with a doctor's in theology or some uh, Amish leader over 300 people. 
Jesus is the only one that's worthy. And I think that there's going to be a lot of surprises when Christ comes back. All these people that are full of pride and think they've done all these great things for Jesus. You know, they've written all these theological books and they've gotten two or three degrees from cemeteries and they've gotten their death certificates from cemeteries. And they've been exalted beyond measure by men down through the ages. You know, you know, it's pride is, you know, none of us deserve grace. None of us deserve grace. It's called unmerited favor of God. What what do we have to boast of? Our $500 suit? Our new Lexus? Our airplane that, that our ministry purchased for us? Uh, our new building that we're just financing? <laughs> you know... Like I said, I think there's going to be a lot of surprises one of these days. People are relying upon the traditions of men on works. And, you know, like the old saying goes, when you come to stand before Jesus, he says, why should I let you into my heaven? What's your answer going to be? What's my answer going to be? Well, look at all the good things I did for you. Or are we going to say, you really shouldn't let me in, but only by the blood of Christ. The perfect sacrifice you paid for my sins. That's the only, only thing that I can bank on. And so, you all might want to watch that, uh, that thing I sent out. You might find it very interesting. I watched the whole thing. And I, you know, my, my heart actually ached for some of those children that left and were ostracized and treated really, really horrible by their parents. You know, if, if your own parents cast you off, think about it. I could relate to a lot of things. Um, I can relate to a lot of things in that video. You know, I was brought up in a very legalistic church and, um, I can tell you that uh, it was not, a lot of it was just sheer tradition of men again. Sheer tradition of men. It, they weren't Amish. The Church of God weren't Amish. But they had just about as many traditions at one time as the Amish did. You know, I remember a time in the holiness movement when they would not allow people to wear neckties. And then they allowed only black neckties. And people say, well, look out, look where it's at now. Well, the point is, is that if a person is relying upon the color of their clothes, or, you know, the Mennonites only want to wear, want to drive black cars. They'll drive cars, but they have to be black. You know? This is the kind of thing that God came against. When he sent his son Jesus Christ and he was dealing with the Pharisees, 
and he was talking about how their phylacteries, their robes, and he took the whip and he drove the money changers out of the temple. And he said, you've made my house a den of thieves. Isn't that what he told them? He came against these Judaizers. And we find that in Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2, Paul came against these Judaizers as well. It's either grace or works, folks. Are you relying upon your traditions? Are you relying upon your good works? Are you relying upon your humility and your piety? Are you relying upon how much you fast? Are you relying upon what you eat or what you don't eat? Um, what colored car you drive? Would you use a horse or a tractor to farm with? What kind of hat you wear? This is all preposterous. Satan loves it. He loves people to get into their works. So this is what I've had on my mind tonight. <clears throat> what about, what about the atonement? What about Golgotha? What about Calvary? Why did Christ <clears throat> go to the cross? Did he go to the cross in vain and now is relying upon your works and all of his blood was shed in vain? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes were healed, not by our works. So ponder on these things. Give up your traditions of men. Give up the uh, denomination, trusting in your denomination. Give up trusting in your traditions, in your confessions, in your synods, in your sessions. Start relying upon the word of God and what Christ says. By grace are you saved, through faith, not of works lest any man should boast. God bless.